I'm Ann Leonard, Manton Curator of Prints, Drawings, and Photographs, and I'm here today to present Field and Stream, Forest and Studio, Barbizon Artists in the Outdoors, in connection with the Clark's current exhibition, A Change in the Light, the Cliché Vert in 19th Century France. The exhibition is on view through May 16th, and I hope you'll get in to see it. Today, though, I've pulled some related works from the vault to share with you. The artists of the Barbizon School wanted to get out of the academy and studio and into the woods. They embraced plein air painting, and so it was important for them to be seen outdoors, at work, surrounded by nature, and independent of conventional expectations. Camille Corot, here set up with his easel in the forest, is asserting his commitment to landscape subjects, and more generally, to the freedom of the open air. Now I'd like to move to the next piece. Corot liked to stay on solid ground, but his fellow artist, Charles-Francois Daubigny's preferred spot was on a boat, plying the rivers around Paris. Daubigny even outfitted his vessel as a small studio, complete with art supplies and all the other necessities of life. Food, a skillet, utensils, and a whole collection of pipes. Every detail in this small etching suggests Daubigny's drive for independence and his determination to live in his own way, exempt from the standards of society, or off the grid, as we would say now. Now let's go to the next piece. It was important to the public image of the Barbizon artists that they be seen in the outdoors, where they not only met friends and socialized, but also worked and made their art. This anonymous photograph from the early to mid-1850s shows a group of like-minded artists in this natural habitat where they enjoyed spending time. However, the equipment required to make photographic images in the early decades of the process was heavy and cumbersome. Photography was therefore not a practical medium for artists working en plein air. For context, an image from the same moment by British photographer Roger Fenton shows his assistant Marcus Sparling perched atop the photographic van which they used while capturing images of the Crimean War. It was fitted out with a portable darkroom for developing pictures taken on the spot. Photography was still a new technology in 1855, and this was the first time it had been used to document a war, which meant working in challenging and sometimes impossible conditions. There came along in 1853 a photographic method that was much more lightweight and accessible and left practitioners more artistic leeway in designing their images. This was the hybrid technique called cliché vert. It used the action of sunlight on sensitized paper to produce an image, just like photography. But the image itself was made by hand by applying ink or paint to a glass plate. Although the glass plates were fragile, there was no heavy equipment to lug around, making it ideal for Barbizon plein air artists working in the landscape. It offered a completely new approach to imagery production, while still reserving for the artist the great expressivity of idiosyncratic line work, as here, in Corot's Souvenir of Babreau, where a tangle of nervous lines and scrawls even obscures his signature at lower right. The individuality of cliché vert is another aspect that made it appealing to Barbizon artists, against what was perceived as the cold and mechanical quality of photography. When Daubigny treats a similar subject to Corot here, he gives it an entirely different handling. Corot's souvenir of the forest was densely shaded, while Daubigny puts a bright halo at the center of his image. In this view from Daubigny's studio boat, other boats are visible in the background, even if the clump of alders and the shining water are the main event. Artists could achieve diverse effects in the printing of cliché vert, depending on which side of the glass plate was put in contact with the photosensitive paper. If the image side was face down against the paper, a crisp, linear image resembling an etching would result, as here. If the image was facing up, the light would scatter and refract as it passed through the glass plate, producing thicker, fuzzier lines. Another way to vary image quality in cliché vert was to make the design using a subtractive method, which means removing ink with tools or a rag or sponge from a fully inked glass plate. In Cow by the Watering Place, Daubigny produces a much moodier, more atmospheric image, with the cow suggested by minimal marks, 
the sky an area of high drama, and the water in the foreground offering a complex set of reflections. To finish, we have a glorious red chalk drawing by Daubigny. Look at how Daubigny treated the very same subject in this red chalk drawing. Details are much clearer. We can make out a herd of cows where there appeared to be only one in the cliché vert. And the vivid color and use of stumping in the tonal areas produce an entirely new effect, as if the time of day and the weather had suddenly shifted on the identical scene. As we contemplate the artist Daubigny migrating between wet and dry media and wet and dry landscapes, let's think about the special role Cliché Vera played for the Barbizon artists. Thanks for joining me for this short talk today.